Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Morning Prayer on this Friday in the fifth week of Lent and the commemoration of James DeCoven. I'm Brother Ron Fox, coming in for Deacon Charles, who is traveling today. And welcome to a cold spring day in Chicago. Um, I see snow on top of the cars. So a little bit about James DeCoven before I give you some page numbers. James DeCoven was born in Middletown, Connecticut on September 19th, 1831, ordained by Bishop Kemper in 1855 and appointed professor of ecclesiastical history at Neshota House. In addition, he administered a preparatory school and assisted at the Church of St. John Chrysostom in Delafield, Wisconsin. Neshota House was associated from the time of its foundation with many of the principles of the Oxford movement, above all in its emphasis on the sacramental life of the church and the expression of devotion to the Eucharist, including such practices as bowing to the altar at the name of Jesus and before receiving communion. In 1859, DeCoven became warden of Racine College at Racine, Wisconsin. DeCoven came to national attention at the General Convention of 1871 and 1874 when the controversy over ritualism was at its height. In 1871, he asserted that the use of candles on the altar, incense, and genuflections were lawful because they symbolized the real spiritual presence of Christ, which the Episcopal Church upheld, along with the Orthodox and the Lutherans. To the General Convention of 1874, DeCoven expressed a religious conviction that underlay his churchmanship. You may take away from us, if you will, every external ceremony. You may take away altars and super altars, lights and incense and vestments, and we will submit to you. But gentlemen, to adore Christ's person in his sacrament, that is the inalienable privilege of every Christian and Catholic heart. How we do it, the way we do it, the ceremonies with which we do it are utterly, utterly indifferent. The thing itself is what we plead for. Because of his advocacy of the ritualist cause, consents were not given to his consecration as Bishop of Wisconsin in 1874 and of Illinois in 1875. Despite calls to serve at prominent parishes in New York City, Boston, Cincinnati, and Philadelphia, he remained in his post at Racine College, where his students admired him as a model of great learning, gracious manners, personal holiness, extraordinary compassion. He died there on March 19, 1879, and is buried on the grounds. The Lord is glorified in his holy ones. Come, let us adore him. For those of you who pray the office using the Book of Common Prayer, morning prayer begins as usual on page 80, followed by Venite on page 82. Today's psalm is Psalm 107, parts 1 and 2, beginning on page 746. And the canticles are 14 and 18 on pages 90 and 93. It's our tradition and custom here at Church of the Atonement to light a candle, regardless of where we may be, signifying the presence of God in our midst. I've already lit mine. If that's part of your practice, I invite you to do that. We'll take just a moment and begin with morning prayer on this Friday in the fifth week of Lent and the commemoration of James DeCoven. Rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and repents of evil. Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Harden not your hearts as your forebears did in the wilderness at Meribah, and on that day at Massa, when they tempted me. They put me to the test, 
though they had seen my works. Forty years long I detested that generation and said, This people are wayward in their hearts. They do not know my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. The Lord is full of compassion and mercy. Come, let us adore him. Psalm 107, parts 1 and 2, beginning on page 746. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endures forever. Let all those whom the Lord has redeemed proclaim that he redeemed them from the hand of the foe. He gathered them out of the lands, from the east and from the west, from the north and from the south. Some wandered in desert wastes. They found no way to a city where they might dwell. They were hungry and thirsty. Their spirits languished within them. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He put their feet on a straight path to go to a city where they might dwell. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. For he satisfies the thirsty and fills the hungry with good things. Some sat in darkness and deep gloom, bound fast in misery and iron, because they rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High. So he humbled their spirits with hard labor. They stumbled and there was none to help. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He led them out of darkness and deep gloom and broke their bonds asunder. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy and the wonders he does for his children. For he shatters the doors of bronze and breaks in two the iron bars. Some were fools and took to rebellious ways. They were afflicted because of their sins. They abhorred all manner of food and drew near to death's door. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He sent forth his word and healed them, and saved them from the grave. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy, and the wonders he does for his children. Let them offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving, and tell of his acts with shouts of joy. Some went down to the sea in ships and plied their trade in deep waters. They beheld the works of the Lord and his wonders in the deep. Then he spoke and a stormy wind arose, which tossed high the waves of the sea. They mounted up to the heavens and fell back to the depths. Their hearts melted because of their peril. They reeled and staggered like drunkards and were at their wits' end. Then they cried to the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them from their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper and quieted the waves of the sea. Then were they glad because of the calm, and he brought them to the harbor they were bound for. Let them give thanks to the Lord for his mercy, and the wonders he does for his children. Let them exalt him in the congregation of the people, and praise him in the council of the elders. The Lord changed rivers into deserts, and water springs into thirsty ground. 
a fruitful land into salt flats. Because of the wickedness of those who dwell there, he changed deserts into pools of water and dry land into water springs. He settled the hungry there, and they founded a city to dwell in. They sowed fields and planted vineyards and brought in a fruitful harvest. He blessed them so that they increased greatly. He did not let their herds decrease. Yet when they were diminished and brought low, through stress of adversity and sorrow, he pours contempt on princes and makes them wander in trackless wastes. He lifted up the poor out of misery and multiplied their families like flocks of sheep. The upright will see this and rejoice, but all wickedness will shut its mouth. Whoever is wise will ponder these things. And consider well the mercies of the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Rise early in the morning and present yourself before Pharaoh, and say to him, Thus says the Lord, the God of the Hebrews, let my people go so that they may worship me. For this time I will send all my plagues upon you yourself and upon your officials and upon your people, so that you may know that there is no one like me in all the earth. For by now I could have stretched out my hand and struck you and your people with pestilence, and you would have been cut off from the earth. But this is why I have let you live, to show you my power and to make my name resound through all the earth. You are still exalting yourself against my people and will not let them go. Tomorrow at this time, I will cause the heaviest hail to fall that has ever fallen in Egypt from the day it was founded until now. Send, therefore, and have your livestock and everything that you have in the open field brought to a secure place. Every human or animal that is in the open field that is not brought under shelter will die when the hail comes down upon them. Those officials of Pharaoh who feared the word of the Lord hurried their slaves and livestock off to a secure place. Those who did not regard the word of the Lord left their slaves and livestock in the open field. The Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand toward heaven so that hail may fall on the whole land of Egypt, on humans and animals and all the plants of the field in the land of Egypt. Then Moses stretched out his staff toward heaven, and the Lord sent thunder and hail, and fire came down on the earth. And the Lord rained hail on the land of Egypt. There was hail with fire flashing continually in the midst of it. Such heavy hail as had never fallen in all the land of Egypt since it had become a nation. The hail struck down everything that was in the open field throughout all the land of Egypt, both human and animal. The hail also struck down all the plants of the field and shattered every tree in the field. Only in the land of Goshen, where the Israelites were, there was no hail. Then Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said to them, This time I have sinned, the Lord is in the right, and I and my people are in the wrong. Pray to the Lord, enough of God's thunder and hail. I will let you go, you need stay no longer. Moses said to him, As soon as I have gone out of the city, I will stretch out my hands to the Lord. The thunder will cease and there will be no more hail, so that you may know that the earth is the Lord's. But as for you and your officials, I know that you do not yet fear the Lord God. Now the flax and the barley were ruined, for the barley was in the ear and the flax was in bud. But the wheat and spelt were not ruined, for they are late in coming up. So Moses left Pharaoh, went out of the city, and stretched out his hands to the Lord. Then the thunder and the hail ceased, and the rain no longer poured down on the earth. But when Pharaoh saw that the rain and the hail and the thunder had ceased, he sinned once more and hardened his heart, he and his officials. So the heart of Pharaoh was hardened, and he would not let the Israelites go, just as the Lord had spoken through Moses. Here ends the reading. A Song of Penitence, Canticle 14, on page 90. O Lord and ruler of the hosts of heaven, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and of all their righteous offspring, you made the heavens and the earth with all their vast array. 
All things quake with fear at your presence. They tremble because of your power. But your merciful promise is beyond all measure. It surpasses all that our minds can fathom. O Lord, you are full of compassion, long-suffering and abounding in mercy. You hold back your hand. You do not punish as we deserve. In your great goodness, Lord, you have promised forgiveness to sinners, that they may repent of their sin and be saved. And now, O Lord, I bend the knee of my heart and make my appeal sure of your gracious goodness. I have sinned, O Lord, I have sinned, and I know my wickedness only too well. Therefore, I make this prayer to you. Forgive me, Lord, forgive me. Do not let me perish in my sin, nor condemn me to the depths of the earth. For you, O Lord, are the God of those who repent, and in me you will show forth your goodness. Unworthy as I am, you will save me in accordance with your great mercy. And I will praise you without ceasing all the days of my life. For all the powers of heaven sing your praises, and yours is the glory to ages of ages. Amen. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Since it is by God's mercy that we are engaged in this ministry, we do not lose heart. We renounce the shameful things that one hides. We refuse to practice cunning or to falsify God's word. But by the open statement of the truth, we commend ourselves to the conscience of everyone in the sight of God. And even if our gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are perishing. In their case, the God of this world has blinded the minds of the unbelievers to keep them from seeing the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. For we do not proclaim ourselves, we proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in clay jars, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always be being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Here ends the reading. A Song to the Lamb, Canticle 18, on page 93. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God, for you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God, from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. The Apostles' Creed on page 96, followed by the Lord's Prayer and Suffrages A on page 97. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. 
for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O Lord, you relieve our necessity out of the abundance of your great riches. Grant that we may accept with joy the salvation you bestow and manifest it to all the world by the quality of our lives through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who led your servant James to Coven to honor your presence at the altar and constantly to point to Christ, Grant that all ministers and stewards of your mysteries may impart to your faithful people the knowledge of your presence and the truth of your grace. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Almighty God, whose most dear Son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We now come to the prayers on behalf of the Episcopal Church of the Atonement and the wider church. You may offer whatever prayer, petitions and thanksgivings you have, either silently or aloud. If you have a particular prayer request, put it in the chat feature of this broadcast, and I will do my best to get to it through the course of the prayers which are about to follow. For the prayers of the Episcopal Church of the Atonement that began on March 17th. For the sick for those in any need or trouble, for all those who have asked for our prayers, especially Paul, Jacob, Jolene, Jeremiah, Melissa, Katie, David, Beth, Susan, Sean, Kate H., Jonathan, Devon, Matthew, Ron B., Judy B., Jerry C., Brad, Mary, Killian, Dennis, former President Carter, Mary, Arun, all with COVID-19, Elizabeth, Jim, Cecilia, Charlie, Edward, Kelly, Anna H., Ann R., Bill, Connie, Larry, Eleanor Francis, religious, Ken, Deacon, Thomas and Greg, priest, Richard, pastor, Michael and Rodney bishops, with Rodney recovering from surgery that was on the 19th. For peace in the Middle East, in Haiti, Ukraine, Russia, Mali, Iran, the Red Sea, and Myanmar, for an end of violence and division in our neighborhood, city, and nation, for those who are traveling, for the unemployed, or for those seeking work, for those struggling with depression, anxiety, or addiction, and for the work of care for real, care for friends, and for all whom they serve. For all healthcare workers, especially Joseph Basil, Jackie, Gary, Will, Choi, Erica K, Larry, Kieran, Lee, Carrie, William, Eric, Lisa, Thomas, and Emily, for all families and children in this city and state, for all expectant parents, and for all prisoners. For members of our military services on active duty, especially Celeste and Nate, and for Scott, serving as security in Iraq. For Paula, our bishop, Charles, our rector, Amanda and Dave, our wardens, and for the members of our vestry, for Eric and Rachel as they prepare for baptism. For the birthdays of Arlen Boyer, Patricia Statler, Jim Clark, Michael Gonzalez, Aiden Caden, and Joseph Eichenlaub, Richard Laberley, and Isaac Ray the wedding anniversary of Frank and the Reverend Pat Eichenlaub. And we pray for the departed, remembering Dory Ann Ladner, who was an unsung hero of the civil rights movement, 11-year-old Jaden Perkins, the actor M. Emmett Walsh, Dan Wakefield, and Tom Giroux. And at the anniversary of their deaths, for Anna Howerton, Miller Cragen Jr., priest, James Alexander, Edwin Moore Bennett, Lena Downey, Harriet Betty Gibbons, James Rice, Earl Bronson, Anna Ferguson, and Margaret Rice. And we offer this prayer for peace. 
Dear God, we realize we are limited in what we can do to help create peace in faraway places, but that people may be more sensitive to the leadings of your spirit, and especially the leaders of the various countries where there is conflict, that peace can become a reality among people and nations, that wars will cease, striving for power will be replaced by love and understanding for one's neighbor. Help us in this endeavor, dear God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The General Thanksgiving on page 101. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. That concludes morning prayer on this Friday in the fifth week of Lent, and we commemorated James DeCoven this morning. Thank you so much for being here with us today. We're here every morning on Google Meet at 8.30 a.m. for morning prayer. Uh, for now, it looks like it's just kind of a cloudy, cold spring day. Uh, as I said at the onset, there's snow on top of the cars here in Chicago this morning. Should warm up a bit. A reminder, this evening we have a simple soup supper at 6 p.m., followed by Stations of the Cross and Benediction of the Blessed Sacrament at 7 p.m. Tomorrow morning, the Rosary at 9.30, followed by the Healing Mass at 10. Sunday, Palm Sunday at 8, 9, and 11. And unless we have a downpour, we should be processing around the block at the 11 o'clock Mass. Thanks so much for being here with us this morning once again. And we hope to see you again tomorrow and each day on Morning Prayer and Google Meet from Church of the Atonement in Chicago, Illinois. Have yourself a great day, everyone. God bless. Take care out there.